also have a uh, biohazard sticker. You've got two pair of gloves. You've got an envelope. You have a little uh, container of distilled water. You have a piece of bindle paper. You got a couple of swabs. And some evidence tape. So what we're going to do is, first of all, collect the blood stain. Now this is a dried blood stain. So what we're going to have to do is um, moisten a tip and then do the packaging. We're going to go ahead and get our packaging ready before we put on our gloves. All right, so let's say this is our first item. So I'm going to go ahead and put a case number on here and the date. and the time. And this is item number one, description. So for the description, this is a swab. Now, if you don't hear anything else, hear that part. What we're going to be packaging as evidence is a swab. We're not packaging the blood stain per se. So it's a swab of suspected blood stain or blood or possible blood or red substance. But we're not gonna call it blood unless we've tested it and we know that it is blood. All right, then the location, we're just going to, we've already got on our property report, whatever the address is. And for the location, we're going to put whatever the surface is. So we're gonna put, uh, Bathroom, countertop. All right, and there'll be more detail in your notes, in your report, there'll be photographs. So where it is on the countertop and all that gets uh, shown later. And then collected by, that's me. All right, so I have gone ahead and filled this out and I am now all ready to do my collection. Uh, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is put on my gloves. And go ahead and open up one of my swabs. Now, sometimes these come two in a package. That's very common. Uh, I just happen to have a box that there was just one each. And uh, these are sterile, so we open them up. And here is our swab. Now, what I need to do is add uh, two drops of distilled water on it. And I'm going to try to do this without getting I want you to see it, but I don't want to drip it all over my stuff here. So I'm going to put two drops here. And you do not let the tip of your, con your container touch the swab. All right. And so now I can do my sample. So I'm going to take this one right here and I'm just going to rub it firmly, the tip. Rotate it, and that is plenty. In the old days, when we were doing just simple blood typing and all of that before DNA, you would have to get large samples. Now, with DNA being so so uh, sensitive, the sampling or the analysis, uh, you don't need a whole lot. So just make the end of the of the, your swab red like that. Now we need to let this dry. Oh, by the way, I sent you a mask. 
you should be wearing your mask at the same time you're doing this. That's what the mask is for. My apologies for forgetting that. All right, so now uh, I have the, the sample. I need to let it dry. This happens to be a drying rack I made because when you buy, the cardboard ones don't last long that you can get. And if you get the more expensive ones or the other type, they're made out of plastic and it's like 60 bucks just for a little rack. So I went to Hobby Lobby or Michael's and I got a pencil box and then a piece of styrofoam that I cut to fit inside. And then I just drilled holes in the tops of the top of the pencil box so that all I have to do is stick my swab in there. So I'm gonna let that dry. All right, so we let that air dry. Now I need to do one more thing here. I need to take a control sample. So I'm going to open a second swab or if there were two in the container, I just take the second one. Again, I'm going to put two drops of distilled water on it. And then for my control sample, I'm gonna sample away from, but on the same surface, away from the uh, evidence. And again, it's the tip of the swab you wanna get. See if I can get an angle there that you can see. All right, so now I have a control sample. And as I said, normally you can't see anything. You shouldn't see any blood, that's for, for sure, or suspected blood. And then you put that also into your drying rack. You will end up in, if this was an actual scene, packaging both items. And so this would be item number one, and that'd be item 1A. And on 1A, it goes into a separate envelope, and it would say control, uh, control for item one, something of that nature. All right, so I'm going to let these dry. Now, let's say that you are um, doing many of these. The problem comes up with, oh, am I going to lose track of which swab is which item? So to avoid that, what I do is I have some of these Avery labels, small Avery labels, and I'll go ahead and put uh, one and one A on these little labels and attach them to the swab stems. Then later, when I need to package, I'll know which ones are which. I won't be confused. Okay, let's fast forward and say that these are dry now. We have the evidence sample, our swab, drying. And now we have our control sample drying. Um, because I had touched other things in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and put on fresh gloves to finish everything. I've got my package ready. Uh, I do have my uh, bindle paper here ready. So I'm going to go ahead and put my second pair of gloves on. And I'm wearing my mask. And now to package this, I need a bindle paper folded. So I'm going to go ahead and fold my bindle paper. And doing that with your gloves on is a little more of a challenge. At least it is for me. But after you've folded your Thousandth bindle, I think it gets a little easier.
Maybe not. And it came out reasonably well. All right, so I've got my bindle ready. And now I need to go ahead and collect my evidence or take my collected evidence and package it. So I'm going to take item number one here, this sample. Now, if you had some clippers or uh, scissors, you could do that. But I don't have a problem with just breaking off the tip like this. So here is my sample. I've broken off the tip. I'm going to open up my bindle, drop it down into the bottom, making sure it goes all the way to the bottom, and then fold it. Complete the fold. Now that's not going to come out at all. I go ahead and put this inside the envelope. Now we don't lick the we don't lick this and close it. Instead, we're going to use our evidence tape. So the evidence tape should be just a little bit longer than the, the width of your opening. I've got it completely sealed. And then because this is suspected blood stain, I'm going to take my biohazard sticker and apply it. And now I'm all set. That's necessary, right? Okay. You have initialed and dated where it goes across the paper onto the, onto the seal.